Hi, this is Steve DeMossi, and welcome to Uncharted DIY. I love tools, and since you're watching this, I'm guessing that you or someone in your life does too. I've gathered a lot of them over the years, though there are some tools I thought might be frivolous or something I'd only use a time or two. Well, once I had a justifiable reason to get some of these, they turned out to be so helpful and solved so many problems so effectively that I wonder how I got this far in life without them. Today, I'm going to show you five versatile tools or accessories that you need, but you might not have known you need. These have significant advantages, saving time, money, effort, and they often increase the quality of the results. They can also avoid wear and tear on your body and increase the comfort of your surroundings. I'll have links to my recommendations for these in the description and on the website at UnchartedDIY.com. On the site, you'll find free extra downloadable content with more information, tips and tricks, and even plans where relevant. And now, in no particular order, I can't think of a power tool that has more uses than a rotary tool, often referred to by the brand name Dremel. These handy tools are used for cutting, sanding, carving, jewelry making, etching, cleaning and polishing, and grinding and sharpening, just to name a few of the many jobs it's capable of. One add-on I have found to be essential is the flex shaft, and that's what this segment is all about. Dremel tools are generally pretty light, and the cordless options are getting better every day, but even the smaller tools are a bit bulky for hand-holding while doing detailed precision work. Hand-holding these tools can become an issue if you have small hands, your strength or dexterity is compromised, or you work with these tools for extended periods of time. Using this flexible shaft attachment makes it so much easier for really fine movements, and it's much easier to control, and also decreases vibration for increased accuracy. These screw on and off the end of the tool as needed. It works best to have these suspended over the work area, and I have free PDF plans on my website showing how to build a super strong, versatile hanger stand like this one. These tools use speed rather than torque to do the work, so it's best if the flex shaft isn't bent too much. The speeds ranging from 3000 to around 30,000 RPM can create a lot of friction and heat. You could put the tool on the bench while using the flex shaft, but it'll want to roll around. A simple fix is a hanger stand that puts the tool above the work area. I have links to ones I'd recommend if you want to purchase a pre-made one, but I made my own. For me, the manufactured stands don't extend high enough and the swing arms are really short. Most only adjust to 42 inches high. This one extends to 52 inches, providing extra clearance for taller projects. Most prefabs only measure 3 to 10 inches for the swing arm, but this one extends 28 inches, covering a much larger portion of your work area. The strong clamp attaches to almost any work surface, such as workbenches, tables, desks, countertops, allowing you to work just about anywhere, and it collapses for easy carrying. For about $25 and a half hour and really basic tools, you too can build this sturdy, great looking stand. You can download free PDF plans on my website with a visual parts list and step-by-step -step photos to make this a fun and easy DIY project. In this video, I'm using a WEN brand tool. This one came in a kit with the flex shaft and many attachments. This is a great value for somebody that doesn't use this for long periods or for everyday use. Some advantages of spending more money on higher end tools include more power, more features, cordless options with decent runtime, cooler running motors, and they're longer lasting. Finally, using a foot control to start and stop the tool hands-free makes them easier and more convenient to use. The one I recommend allows you to vary the speed with foot pressure, much like a sewing machine does. This is a tool that will amaze you and how many creative uses you'll find for it. The oscillating multi-tool rivals the Dremel in its vast array of functions. For me, one of the great features is its ability to make plunge cuts, 
which is cutting a hole without having to first drill a starter hole. Some of the other uses for this tool include cutting door jams in place for adding a new hardwood or tile floor, detail sanding where it would be difficult to use a dedicated sander, plunge cutting, flush cutting, cutting pipes from PVC, ABS, conduit, and copper, scraping off flaking paint, removing old mortar and adhesive, cutting off trim and moldings, grinding out grout, cutting clean holes in drywall, cutting off a rusted, seized nut, and doing tile work, just to name a few. I've also used mine to remove baseboard and trim pieces without damaging them or the wall and was able to reuse them. This tool features an offset blade and the option to angle the blade in almost any direction or even flip it over. Its small oscillation arc makes it a very precise tool, especially in tight spaces. You can download a free PDF on my site that has useful tips for getting the most out of this multi-purpose tool. This versatile multi-tool has so many uses and attachments that I could spend all day covering them. The bottom line is, if you don't already have one, you need one. Like the Dremel, spending more can be a better value, but you don't need to spend a lot to get a nice one, and it'll surprise you how often you'll find yourself reaching for it. Thermal cameras have been around for a long time, but it's only in the last few years that the cost of this amazing technology has come down enough to put it in the hands of everyday people. It's like adding a completely new sense to the ones we were born with. You might recognize infrared thermal vision from the movie Predator, but it has many more uses than chasing Arnold Schwarzenegger through the jungle. You'll often hear infrared thermal cameras referred to as FLIR cameras for forward-looking infrared. The type I'm talking about today are the smartphone-based cameras rather than the expensive, dedicated units. Not to be confused with night vision, which amplifies available visible ambient light to make it possible to see in almost complete darkness, infrared cameras sense the heat being emitted by all people, objects, and materials. They work in daylight and total darkness, and can see through smoke, haze, fog, and even certain types of objects to measure and display differences in temperature. You might be thinking, why would I need one of these cameras? Here's a sampling of things I've used mine for. Checking my walls for insulation gaps, seeing where the heating ducts run in the house and finding any leaks or hot spots, checking for windows leaking heated or cooled air, identifying gasket issues in freezers and fridges, determining which cylinder was misfiring on a motorcycle, the source of an antifreeze leak in a car radiator, figuring out which battery is the one I was just using versus the fully charged one, looking for cool spots in drywall indicating possible water damage leading to mold, determining if a disc brake is dragging causing the wheel to heat up, and making sure your child's bath water is mixed evenly. Other things that are interesting, if not that useful, looking for ghosts like they do on all the ghost hunting shows, watching a skunk eating a peanut on the patio, seeing heat from handprints on surfaces and butt prints left on furniture, finding the coldest beer, writing invisible messages with heat, Deciding, is the sound outside your tent a raccoon, a bear, or Bigfoot? Making sure the heated toilet seat is working before sitting down, avoiding thermal shock. I have a FLIR 1 brand smartphone camera from FLIR Systems, though mine is a generation older now. That's why there's a USB converter on mine. The new ones tuck right up to the base of the phone. There are other brands, and the new generation cameras have some refinements and features. The big deciding factor for me choosing the FLIR 1 over others is the technology they call MSX, which combines a normal vision camera overlaid with the infrared images to bring out details that make it much easier to interpret and understand what you're seeing on the screen. These shoot both video and still images. 
I chose the basic model, but they also come in more advanced versions that have more resolution and added features. For my use, the base model does everything I've asked it to do. Check to see if the upgrades would be helpful to you if you buy one. I am amazed at how often I use this little device. It saved me time and money, made life more comfortable, made complex tasks easy, and it's a lot of fun. If you're a homeowner, a DIYer, or just want to add a new way to sense the world around you, you'll love finding useful and fun ways to use one. On UnchartedDIY.com, you'll find a free PDF with more information and tips and tricks about using these amazing devices. This is an impact driver. There are a lot of tools with similar forms or impact in the name. Hammer drill, drill driver, handheld impact driver, and impact wrench. But this tool is an impact driver and not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. I didn't have one until I had a large composite deck to build. But now that I do have one, it's one of my favorite tools. It doesn't replace a drill driver when it comes to drilling precise holes. Instead, impact drivers are designed for quickly and efficiently performing jobs like driving long deck screws, lag screws, structural screws, fastening concrete screw anchors, nut setting and driving screws into metal studs, and driving carriage bolts into wooden posts. It was really helpful when I made my compost tumbler and when I made my raised beds. Using around 50 pulses of energy or impacts per second with ample turning force or torque, it makes quick work of the toughest jobs. It uses a quarter inch hex shaft collet, not a chuck like a drill, so it's quick to change bits. And with its small size and light weight compared to a drill, it fits into tight spaces and is easy to use. Unlike using a drill to drive screws, especially long ones, Impact drivers keep the bit engaged with the screw, preventing a lot of screw stripping issues. Even though they apply a great deal of torque, these don't twist your wrist like a strong drill can do. The downward energy is transferred directly to the fastener instead of your body. After working with one all day on big jobs, my hands and wrists are happy I used an impact driver. Like all tools, there are various prices and feature sets. This Cobalt has three power settings, electronic variable speed, and a finish mode for precise control. It has a strong battery and plenty of power, and the price is a great value, especially combined with a drill driver in a set. These are brushless, so the batteries last a lot longer between charges, and the motors stay cooler. I've done some really large jobs with mine, and I can recommend them highly. I didn't know how much I needed one of these and how much time I could have saved until I used one. On UnchartedDIY.com, you'll find a free PDF with more information and tips and tricks about this useful tool. Digital calipers only do one thing and are not the most glamorous of tools, but they sure make measuring small things that are otherwise tough to measure accurate and easy. Imagine the difficulty of trying to measure something like this with any degree of exactitude. These eliminate the need to eyeball your measurements. These have three universal systems of measurement, decimal inches, fractions, and millimeters. It's an equally practical choice for both professionals and for do-it-yourself projects, and it adds accuracy down to a thousandth of an inch. The digital display is fast and easy to read compared to analog dial types. It measures outside dimensions, inside dimensions, and has an extendable depth gauge for use in slots and holes. The step feature makes it especially easy to measure things like the threaded portion of a screw or bolt. These come in handy all the time and I find myself reaching for them rather than a ruler or tape measure for small measurements. I often take this with me when I go to the hardware store to make sure bits and pieces of a project are going to play nicely together. I use mine for measuring nuts, bolts, bearings, brake rotors, cables, 3D printer calibration, woodworking, gaskets, plumbing, sizing drill bits, dowels, shims, and springs, and turning on a lathe. 
They're also ideal for machined parts, leather thickness, reloading, and fabrication. These are amazingly useful tools for the price. These can run about $30, though you can spend upwards of 10 times that amount if you need mission critical, life hanging in the balance precision, or you work for NASA. Because these calipers are so inexpensive, I have a set in my office, one at the workbench, and one in my toolbox. I highly recommend getting one or more of these. You'll wonder how you manage to take accurate measurements without them. You'll find a free PDF with information on how to get the most accurate measurements with these cool calipers on UnchartedDIY.com. This is Steve, and thanks for watching Uncharted DIY. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you have questions, tips or tricks of your own, or other tools you didn't know you needed, please leave them here in the comments or on the article page at UnchartedDIY.com.